I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, past president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm joined today with Dr. Vivian Brown, who's an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. So we're going to talk about HPV. So the vaccine's been out for a while. What do we know about the impact of the vaccine? Well, you know, it's very exciting because we now have more than 58 publications from all over the world showing that there's a reduction in precancerous changes in people that have been vaccinated. We also know that there's been a herd effect. And really what we are seeing is we're seeing less dysplasia, less precancerous changes in the general population, particularly some US data that was really exciting. If we look at the difference between US and Canada and other countries, you know, what is the approval in terms of use? Yeah. Do they differ? So uh, it's a really good question. The vaccine is approved for ages 9 to 45, both in, the can in Canada and in the U.S. And the CDC recently came out with a statement saying, yes, this is recommended age 9 to 26, but for both men and women, it can be offered up to age 45. That's how the vaccine was studied in people up to age 45. After that age, it's considered off-label. And in Canada, we have no upper age limit. Our National Advisory Committee on Immunization suggests that it's a discussion between an individual and her primary care provider as to whether she still is at risk, because risk is associated with exposure and doesn't stop at any given age. So let's look at the impact of HPV, the uptake of the vaccine, changes in guidelines about frequency of PAPs, Will we see even longer intervals now that we have a larger cohort that's been vaccinated? You know, Marla, that's a fantastic question, and the answer is looking at Australia. Australia has phenomenal data. They had great uptake of the vaccine from the get-go, and what they've now done is they've changed their screening entirely. In Australia, and they published this in The Lancet last year, 2018, they no longer do pap tests. Primary screening is HPV DNA, and you only have a pap test if you're DNA positive. And Australia has announced that by 2024, they will be the first country in the world to have less than four per 100,000 cases of cervical cancer. They're going to be the first country to eliminate cervical cancer as a public health uh, issue. So I think when we look to significant uptake of vaccine, what we're seeing is the ability to then change our screening guidelines, change what we're doing, and just the way we don't have iron lungs in hospitals anymore for polio, with a population that's vaccinated, we no longer will be doing routine pap tests, we'll be doing routine DNA testing. So since we're still doing pap tests, and we look at women over the age of 21, or someone who's 35 or 45 who comes in with an abnormal pap who has not previously been vaccinated. Can you speak to the data about why it's never too late to get an HPV vaccine? You know, there's a great study that was done in the U.S. with uh, women who were online dating. The study was lo looked at women between 25 and 65, and what they were able to show was that risk went up with exposure. Age was not relevant. So depending on what your own situation is, if you're going to have a new partner, perhaps your long-term partner has died or, or divorced or your situation has changed, if you're going to be exposed, you should consider talking to your primary care provider about vaccination. But if you haven't been vaccinated and you come back with an abnormal pap, is there any point in vaccinating now? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And there's been two uh, studies, one in Italy and one in Korea, that looked at women after a procedure for cervical dysplasia. They had CIN two or three after LEAP procedures. And what they saw was a reduction of recurrence. So recurrence with the same subtype. And in the uh, Italian study, they saw a six-fold reduction of any kind of HPV infection or change. And so by immunizing women, even after exposure, even after an abnormal pap test, you reduce their risk of having persistent HPV, which can lead to a cancer in another location or a recurrence in the same location. So yes, and our guidelines in Canada suggest that even if a woman has been diagnosed with cervical cancer, there's a great benefit in vaccinating to reduce her risk of recurrence. Thanks so much. Thank you.